Hello, and welcome to Story Recap. For this episode, let's talk about what happened in G.I. Joe Retaliation. So big time spoilers ahead, watch out. The scene opens up with the Joes taking a stealthy mission to the Korean demilitarized zone to find a North Korean defector. Intelligence and Infantry Specialist Captain Duke Hauser now leads the G.I. Joe team. We see these high-gated fences where Roadblock, Flint, and Duke are trying to infiltrate. While on the lookout, Mouse and Lady J were stationed should things flip. To get through the gates, Roadblock uses these high-powered hand tech that produces heat hot enough to melt the gates but safe for him not to burn his hand. He creates an irregular circle, and they enter the area. Mouse creates a diversion by shooting at the cup a North Korean soldier is holding as he was about to drink his coffee, while our stealthy sniper slash parkour expert Flint is told to stay put. But Flint doesn't stay put. Duke and Roadblock fight North Korean soldiers as Roadblock looks for Clint. Roadblock then orders Mouse to shoot Clint if he finds him not following orders. Then they retrieve the defector and proceed to the hole where they entered. Flint is then instructed to get himself back on the team, but Flint successfully marks the territory with the G.I. Joe flag up on the pole instead of the North Korean flag which was there. What a sneaky chaotic evil. This also makes me wonder how he did that with all those soldiers there. Anyway, he's a Joe. So moving forward, Mouse reports what Flint did to Roadblock, and the scene is cut to the logo of the Joes before Roadblock finishes the bad word he was about to say. We are then introduced to an opening scene introducing the team of G.I. Joes on how Cobra Commander and Destro have been captured by the Joes and placed in a maximum security prison. Yet Cobra operatives Storm Shadow and Zartan are still at large. But if you're a fan and you've watched G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra, You'll know that Zartan is presently the president of America after he successfully took over the role of the US president and held him hostage. After the opening credits, we find Jinx, a beautiful woman clad in a white robe with red armor matching a red blouse and red leggings and boots, going through a test to see if she is worthy of joining the G.I. Joes. She wears a matching red blindfold, and she takes two katanas, one on each hand. The blind master assigns snake eyes to test her abilities, where he is also tasked to pluck a single strand on Jinx's head, which he successfully does after a few rounds. Of course, Snake Eyes got sliced on his right hand, and Jinx storms off grumpily while Snake Eyes receives a katana named the Blade of Justice. Made of black carbon fiber, cruel and indestructible, Snake Eyes is then assigned to a mission by the Blind Master. Now if you've wondered why we've skipped a scene, we really don't want to see Duke's poor video gaming skills. But since you're curious, Will you look at his soldier spin? So let's take that away, aside from that part where Roadblock's children hugged him. That was adorable. They discover on TV how Pakistani's President Amzad Panwar was killed during a civil war. The US President, who is currently Zartan, aka the Cobra operative that whistles, for he's a jolly good fellow all the time, has now a meeting at the Pentagon with the generals in the US and members of the cabinet on the decision with what to do. Zartan slash US. President then orders to get him the Joes to steal those nuclear warheads with a smirk and an ulterior motive. Now we move to the next scene where the Joes are on the plane, Star 1, with Duke's final instructions to the team before they descend to the enemy base. We see Mouse shaking on his first landing and then Roadblock comforting him. Lady J shows off the P-Dub 381 Black Tempest, which are bullets that are remote controlled and are only exclusive for distinguished marksmen like Mouse and Lady J. Flint asks where Snake Eyes is, and Roadblock explains he has to have a reason why he's not present. The team successfully retrieved the warheads after grueling minutes of fighting against the Pakistanis. Captain Duke then reports to the White House on how they've successfully retrieved the warheads. Then we see Zartan, still impersonating the US president, smirking. Now Roadblock and Captain Duke have a heart-to-heart -heart talk and short game, challenging him for a whole weekend to watch over Roadblock's kids versus Roadblock accepting the next promotion. Roadblock ends up cheating and winning the game when he distracts Duke and uses a handheld Gatling gun to shoot at the wood where the cupcake with a candle was. The scene now pans to US President slash Zartan whistling and greeting his bodyguard as they proceed to an underground shelter where he had held the real US President hostage. He threatens the US president about how he'll end the Joes with his ulterior motive to strike them down. The US president tells him how the Joes will find out about his impersonation and exhibits the nanomite slash microtechnology, which keeps him looking like the US president despite slicing his face with a sharp dagger. He now informs the hostage US president about the identity of the guards guarding him against the constituent called Bono, 
his new secret service, along with the so-called interns. Then we are brought back to Pakistan, where the Joes are waiting for security to pick them up after the nuclear warheads. Roadblock then sees a remote-controlled firefly which he found peculiar, and he calls Duke, who looks at the lights assuming they are planes to pick them up. Unfortunately, that security was the airstrike ordered by Zartan after the Joes were branded as traitors for causing an international incident by stealing those warheads under his command. This airstrike instantly kills most of the Joes, including Captain Duke. Now the only survivors of this incident are Flint, Roadblock, and Lady J, who hid inside the well from the enemies looking for them. As for Zartan, still, as the US president announces during a live broadcast press conference, that the Joes abandoned their stations and seized the opportunity to take over Pakistan's arson. Zartan then calls upon all the nation's leaders to talk about weaponry. He then announces Cobra as the new special force facilitating the termination of the Joes, its commander, facilities, and personnel. After getting out of the well, Lady J, Roadblock, and Flint witness the devastating scene which happened hours earlier. Roadblock then finds Duke's body and retrieves his tag. Meanwhile, Snake Eyes is brought to the Ein Sergeant subterranean prison, where he meets Warden James, who takes him to an underground area where Destro and Cobra Commander are placed in water-filled tubes. Unfortunately, this wasn't Snake Eyes, but this was Storm Shadow disguised as Snake Eyes, who was found to have killed the Pakistani president. The very reason the Joes were implicated was due to their connection in his disguise. Storm Shadow is then placed inside the tube, where he looks at Cobra Commander and Destro. Now we see Firefly using some high-tech sword, and hundreds of high-tech Fireflies carrying liquid bombs head over to the facility. While this is happening, Storm Shadow, inside the tube, observes the Fireflies arriving at the gates through the camera monitoring outside as his cue. He then fakes his death, where his pulse rapidly turns to zero, and the personnel inside panic. They quickly open his tube, and his pulse returns and he kills the personnel who checked him. The guards, along with Warden James, head over to the area where they are all killed by Storm Shadow. James hides as he witnesses Storm Shadow kill all his armed men, and a panic ensues outside as Firefly also bombards the area using the Fireflies. Storm Shadow proceeds to murder the guards inside the facility. James then electrocutes Storm Shadow in his desperation to escape. On the other hand, Firefly arrives inside the facility while Storm Shadow shoots at the tube, releasing Cobra Commander. Firefly rolls three balls of fragmentation grenades which kill the three guards instantly. Firefly, Storm Shadow, and Cobra Commander have a short talk, and Warden James, already critically injured, grabs the nearest handgun and shoots at the gas, which badly burns Storm Shadow's back. James is then shot to death by Cobra Commander. As the three exits, Snake Eyes also observes them from a far distance. And remember the lady in red? Yes, Jinx also arrives to help Snake Eyes. He hands over the katanas but drops them just to piss Jinx off. We are now brought to a US Army facility, where the Army is crafting high-powered missiles for Zeus as Cobra Commander and Firefly arrive and oversee them. Zartan arrives, and they talk about how in 48 hours, Zeus will be released. Zartan, still impersonating the US President, reports how three Joes had survived his cleaner slash airstrike. After minutes of talking about the Cobras, we're now brought back to the last three Joes, who are finding ways to get back several people to side with them. The Joes are now brought to America in Roadblock's childhood neighborhood, where he is known as Marvin. In another scene by the Snowy Mountains, Storm Shadow's burns are being treated through a traditional and modernized healing strategy. Meanwhile, Jinx and Snake Eyes are heading towards Storm Shadow's location and are on their way to the mountains when they get a signal from the remaining Cobras and find out how they've survived. The two proceed to driving towards Storm Shadow's location. Then Lady J observes the peculiarity of the President, from his actions to his voice, the way he speaks, and his gestures, and compared it. Flint then hypothesizes that there is no one they can trust that's left, whereas Roadblock mentions one man whom they can trust which is the very reason they call themselves Joes. And guess who this is, General Joseph Colton. They paid General Colton a visit who is at first, wary of their presence. Roadblock then opens a bag and drops all the tags of the dead Joes on his coffee table. The three then discuss the possibility of the imposter president, and Colton asks about Duke, which makes Colton a little emotional. However, if you failed to notice how the coffee table with the tags moved so quickly, 
Here's a comparison. The three then go on a mission to infiltrate the White House and identify the real identity of the imposter president. They smoothly abduct and inject a serum into the Chief of Justice and interview him inside the pickup truck. Roadblock then instructs him to call to confirm the imposter U.S. president's identity. Now the scene switches to Snake Eyes and Jinx finally climbing the mountain where Storm Shadow is now partially healed from the burns from the master. Storm Shadow then witnesses ninjas falling from the roof and hurriedly heads outside, only to find Snake Eyes behind him. Their fight starts as Storm Shadow throws shurikens at Snake Eyes, and he shoots at them one by one. A fight between them starts, and Jinx arrives to fight the master that healed Storm Shadow's burns. Jinx outsmarts the old lady in Snake Eyes, and Jinx successfully takes an unconscious Storm Shadow away, ziplining on the snowy mountains with dozens of red ninjas coming after them. Of course, let's not forget that Storm Shadow's unconscious body was also ziplined along with them. A risky fight between Snake Eyes and Jinx versus the Red Ninjas then proceeds. Snake Eyes throw Jinx off the area they were in to keep her safe first as he shoots a flare at the pile of snow and successfully outsmarts and kills all the Red Ninjas on the mountain with an avalanche. In the White House, the three remaining Joes infiltrate an event held by the President slash Sartan, where he announces the nuclear summit. Lady J, out of her casual clothes, is now beautifully dressed in red and takes after the role of Amy Vandervoort, the chief of staff. She talks to the US president imposter and grabs a strand of his fallen hair on his shoulder. J is being tracked during their conversation by Zartan's secret service head bodyguard while she excuses herself and places the strand of hair in a high-tech lipstick for tracking. She is then identified as an imposter and not Amy Vandervoort and they discover that the current president is Zartan through their tracking device. As Zartan takes Jay away for a dance, Xander, the head of Bono, slash the US Secret Service, then orders his team to capture Lady Jay who has infiltrated the venue. Roadblock then tells the team how he will sacrifice himself and bombard the limo where Zartan will ride. A plan which failed as Firefly brought his swarm of Firefly bombs with him and tried to kill Block. Roadblock and Firefly then get into fist-to-fist -fist combat and is bloody and almost shot dead by Firefly when Jay and Flint arrived on time and hit him with the van. They attempted to kill him. Unfortunately, a limping and injured Firefly successfully escaped with his motorbike. And if you are wondering about what happened to everyone's favorite silent ninja, Snake Eyes? Well, now they're back at the Arashikage Dojo on the rooftop, where the blind master had placed a sword beside the face of a bruised storm shadow telling him about his sins of killing his uncle, the hard master, that personally trained him. Storm Shadow told his side of the story about how he was framed all along by the enemy. He then looked at Snake Eyes, angered that his friends had easily believed he had killed the hard master. Now, Storm Shadow, teary-eyed and filled with hate, tries to retrieve his sword in front of him, only for his Arashikage sword to be broken by Snake Eyes' blade of justice. The blind master helps Storm Shadow recall his memory and, Sadly, now remembers who had killed the hard master, it was Zartan. Storm Shadow's face now shows a hint of realization of his memory. Back in America, we are taken back to the Three Joes, where Flint and Roadblock are fighting because of Block's suicide mission attempt. Both get into a heated argument, and Block reveals how he didn't want to bury any more Joes. Jay and Flint then get a heart-to-heart -heart talk while he looks at the mirror now and then while checking out Jay who was changing her clothes. Kinda creepy dude. At the underground shelter where Zartan kept the real US president, Firefly, Zartan, and Cobra Commander, forced the real president to use his eyes and finally gain access to the remote control for Project Zeus through a briefcase that is only activated by the real US president. In another scene, Snake Eyes and Jinx infiltrate the area where the three remaining Joes are headquartered, and they do some short warm-up combat. Now the Joes are explained by Jinx that Storm Shadow is their only key to gaining access to that conference where the world's leaders will be blackmailed. And we are finally brought to the climax of the scene where the team is at General Colton's house, where every cabinet, stove, well, technically, every part of his house has tons of firearms hidden. This part is personally everyone's favorite and my personal favorite. Then, of course, for that awesome finale, Heavy guns are hidden in a closet slash secret vault. General Colton shows Roadblock his favorite gun and brings him to his garage, where he's kept his armored vehicle. New faces along with Jinx and Storm Shadow are now gathered at the dining table with Roadblock strategizing the plan a plan to stop Project Zeus and take down Cobra Commander and his associates. Now at Fort Sumter, South Carolina, 
the world leaders are invited to A8 Atomic Summit. By boat, Cobra arrives, with Storm Shadow behind him, Firefly, the Red Ninjas, and the US Army tailing behind them. Zartan slash imposter US President blackmails the world leaders with three minutes to disable their nuclear arsenals immediately. This threat enrages every world leader and a panic commences around them. Amidst all that, the Joes have successfully infiltrated the area. At the heat of the moment, country leaders now take out their briefcases which control their nuclear weapons, and launch them at one another to start a war. Zartan, on the other hand, is just as calm as he is, playing with angry birds. After they've launched their missiles and Zartan slash imposter US president easily destroys their missile, they eventually aborted it after being threatened by Zartan. He reveals that he has created Project Zeus, which had seven orbital kinetic bombardment weapons of mass destruction at his command. Cobra then arrives at the summit, and to prove Project Zeus' power, he destroys central London and activates the remaining weapons which are pointed at Israel, Russia, China, India, North Korea, etc. while offering the world leaders to disarm their arsenal if they submit to Cobra. Meanwhile, the Cobra commander now has his army stationed in every country to have global dominion by which he calls the Cobra Revolution. After Cobra reveals his plan and finishes his speech, Storm Shadow, with his cousin Jinx who is disguised as a red ninja then starts a fight. Snake Eyes arrives with UCI guns, in both hands, shooting at every army and red ninja in the area. With the armored vehicle that General Colton gave him, Block arrives and secures the perimeter, shooting missiles at every tank surrounding the area. Now an indestructible duo, Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes kill every red ninja in their way. As both witness Sartan escaping, Storm Shadow is stopped in his tracks by Snake Eyes, who hands him the Blade of Justice, before he can chase after him. Snake Eyes then arrives in time to help Jinx while Storm Shadow heads off to kill off his uncle's murderer. Storm Shadow successfully kills the Red Ninja guarding Zartan, as Storm holds the Blade of Justice by Zartan's neck. Sadly, he was stopped as one of Firefly's bomb Firefly detonated the bomb near them and escaped with Project Zeus' remote control briefcase. On another mission at the White House, Jay and General Colton arrive to retrieve the hostaged US president. Xander orders every secret service to secure the entrance and the area but all his men are immediately subdued by the two. Xander attempts to threaten both with the president's life, but Jay shoots at the president's arm as a diversion and finally kills off Xander. The scene switches to Storm Shadow, as he recovers from the blow and finds Sartan, still in the US president's form, pointing a handgun at him. Storm Shadow immediately kills Zartan with the Blade of Justice thrown straight to his heart, and he finally transforms back to his original form with his death. Sadly, the Cobra Commander flies out via helicopter and escapes, while Firefly attempts to follow after with the briefcase for Project Zeus. His attempt to escape fails as Block chases after Firefly through the boat and then engages in a close gunfight to retrieve the briefcase. Block finally beats him and gets a hold of the briefcase and stops Project Zeus before it destroys other countries. This causes the satellites to get terminated and destroy themselves. Firefly, heavily injured, attempts to release his last Firefly at Roadblock, who finds out that actually has the remote to it. Roadblock then detonates the last Firefly and walks away like a total badass like nothing happened. In the final scene, Storm Shadow finally hands over the Blade of Justice to his cousin, Jinx, and gives a short nod at Snake Eyes. Jinx attempts to return the katana to Snake Eyes, who eventually just gives it to her. Now for the final scene, we see the real US president holding a press conference where General Colton awards Snake Eyes, Jinx, Flint, and Captain J. Finally, the movie ends with General Colton privately presenting his most prized handgun to Roadblock, for their mission to find Cobra Commander. If you want interesting movie recaps like these, like, share, and subscribe to follow us for more movie recaps.